Welcome back to another episode of Movie Pitch Mondays. I'm Edward Mullen, I'm an author, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a vlogger, blogger, and I do movie pitches. So in today's movie pitch, I'm going to be pitching a sequel to A Quiet Place. Um, you know, hopefully you've seen the movie. If not, uh, I'll probably be spoiling some of it. Okay, so as I see it, there's three possible scenarios, three obvious scenarios for a follow-up to A Quiet Place. Um, number one, you could have the, the mom, I don't remember her name, like Emily Blunt. She goes on with the kids and she goes off on her own and maybe there's other, you know, critters or aliens. She probably meets other people. That's a very obvious storyline. The second obvious storyline is to maybe do a prequel. So this one, you could get John Krasinski back in the franchise. So you want to set up um you know how how this whole thing unfolded you know why are these aliens even here assuming they're aliens why are these beasts here um how did it all go down what were these people's lives like prior to this thing how did they end up like this that way you could do and, and i like that idea you could you could set it up and have john krasinski in the movie the third obvious well i mean to me the the third likely scenario for a sequel would be to just focus on an entirely different family. So Emily Blunt and John Krasinski aren't in it. We just find some other family in some other part of the world and we just follow them. Um, but I'm not going to be pitching any of those three ideas. I think I'm going to pitch a little bit unconventional idea which has a glimmer, a hope of plausibility. I think, so in the end of the movie we see no, we don't see. We're John Krasinski is implied that he gets uh, eaten by this monster. But what if we have him kind of fall into a pit or something like that and break his leg and he he can come back for the sequel. He's he's not dead. He's just kind of hurt himself. So that's kind of what I would do. Okay, so I should mention that if we really analyze what made the first movie so successful, um, I think it's, you know, the monsters were really cool and unique. We haven't really seen that before. Um, and it was also, you know, you couldn't speak, which was this, you know, we haven't seen that before. That was kind of this element of, you know, um, intensity or this tension that would build. Um, so those two things kind of made the movie stand out other than like the acting and, and whatever. But so if you think about it, if the sequel just had monster, the same monsters and you had to be quiet through the whole time, it's basically the same movie. And I don't think they're going to do that. Um, you need to kind of expand the story and kind of move it along. And, uh, so what I would do is... I would have new monsters. Okay, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, so the opening scene of the movie, you know, the woman's holding the shotgun. She grabs her kids. It's basically, we recap the end of the first movie. And so she's crying. She has the baby. She has the kids. Is everybody okay? They go out to check on dad. He's gone. And uh, yeah, so, so it's a very sad moment. So as she's kind of crying and consoling the kids and figuring out her shit, she sees a helicopter fly over the house and it's making a ton of noise. And she watches it go off in the distance and she realizes there are no beasts coming after this helicopter. And she tests a theory. I don't know, maybe she like sets off a flare or something, something that makes noise. She has some like she pulls a lever and there's some pots and pans or whatever and nothing comes out. So she's like, you know what? I think the coast is clear. Like, it doesn't make sense for us to stay in this house anymore. We're only here because this was kind of our little sanctuary, but like, we should probably go find other people. So she sets off, she packs up all the kids, make, you know, packs lunches or whatever, sets off and, you know, she's got the, the shotgun or the rifle or whatever. And they're basically heading in the direction of the helicopter for no other reason. And maybe they're trying the radio and, and there's no signal. So they're like, all right, well, let's at least go in the direction of that helicopter. Who knows? Maybe we'll stumble upon some civilization. So this is basically what I call a point A to point B story. You know, we've seen this in like, you know, Mad Max Fury Road. The whole plot is like, oh, we have to, we're here and we have to get there. So 
that journey, there's going to be some trials and tribulations along the way. She's now a single mother having the weight of um, you know, losing her husband and, and having a newborn and taking care of the kids. And this is all very new for her. She you know, doesn't know if she has the strength to do this. Um, you know, she's consoling the kids who are freaking out. She's now in a survival situation. She has to like make camp and get food and make sure everybody, you know, doesn't have splinters or, you know, they're not uh, getting, you know, bit by ants or whatever. It's, it's a lot to deal with. And so she carries on, she's doing the best she can and she's emotional, she's an emotional wreck, right? Um, she does meet some people along the way, some like some sketchy, shady dudes that are kind of like looking at her like a piece of meat. And she's like grabs the guns, like get back, like <clears throat> like makes them like she's mama bear at this point, full on mama bear mode. And uh, so you know they're they're washing up in the river and they're making their way to you know it starts raining. It's it's not going well for this this family, right? And so. Just when all hope is lost, she's broken down. The kids are consoling her like, mom, are you okay? She has to be the strong one because these kids are counting on her. You know, they're little kids, right? And she's like, yeah, um, we're, we're gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Next thing you know, okay, well, I'll, I'll say this. So meanwhile, we're seeing the John, I'll call him John, I don't know his name in the movie, but like the John Krasinski character. Meanwhile, we, say, we see John in the bottom of a 30 foot pit or whatever. I, I don't know why it's there. Maybe it's like an old well or something like that. And he's, you know, he's badly hurt. He broke his leg, he smashed his head on a rock, he's been out of it, right? So he's kind of coming to and not really sure what's happening. And he, you know, climbs his way out of this, of this well and uh, finally makes it to the top. He's battered and bloody, broken leg, makes into the house, wife and kids are gone and he has to assume the worst. So, you know, he's got like a makeshift, um, like cast, he's got like two boards around his leg and then he wraps it up to kind of, you know, give him some stability. He's got some makeshift crutches and he's hobbling around doing the best he can to survive, right? So uh, he realizes, you know, like he, he can't stay here. This isn't, you know, really a good place for him to be. So he packs up and he sets off and, uh, you know, maybe he tries to find civilization or maybe he's under the impression he finds a clue that, hey, maybe the wife and kids have left, and if I just catch up to them, then maybe I can catch up to them. So he's now left. So as he's, well, okay, let's jump back to the to the mum scene. So the mum is, you know, broken down. She's she's her spirits are uh, not in good shape, and she needs a sign of hope. She needs some kind of glimmer of light to kind of guide the way. So she sees a helicopter coming over her head in kind of reminding her like, hey, stay on course, you're almost there. And it seems like it comes down just beyond the mountain. So, you know, hope is restored. She's like, okay, kids, let's go. We just have to get up this mountain. Once we're on the other side, there's gonna be civilization like that. I'm pretty sure that was a military helicopter. We're, we're gonna be safe, it's gonna be good. So they're all like, you know, I have the tiger. Let's go, let's go, like walking up this mountain. They just get over the cusp of the mountain and they see a civilization, a makeshift like military base, if you will. There's like maybe some pop-up tents, some tanks. I don't know. It's like helicopters and she's got the smile on her face. There's some celebration. Oh my God, it's great. It's great. As they take a few steps, the base just gets completely destroyed by like either it explodes or something like that or, you know, more beasts just like are like ravaging the place and I don't know, something like that. So jump back to the John Krasinski scene. He's making his way on foot through, you know, the forest or whatever. And he's making a lot of noise. He's like stepping on sticks and knocking, you know, pine cones and, and, and yelling at squirrels and, and whatnot. All of a sudden there's these little like hatchlings, these eggs that are sprouting from the ground almost like the little beast that we saw earlier, but they're little and they're like crawling kind of like spiders and there's a bunch of them. So he's like, oh shit, right? So he's hobbling, he's do doing his best to get away and, and maybe he's got a weapon like a machete or something and, and he's hacking at them and, and he's trying to get away and, and there's more coming and they're like on him and he's like trying to fight them off and maybe he like dives in a river or something and it gets swept away and he washes up on shore like, you know, a mile away or two miles away, whatever. 
So that's a very harrowing scene. His leg looks like shit. He uh, cleans it up. Maybe he he gets like a hot knife and, and sticks it on like a wound to cauterize it or something. He's fighting for survival, but this guy's a survivalist. So, well, I mean, like he's used to this because he's done it for the last couple of years. Maybe we introduce a little bit of backstory, some flashbacks of before, like what his life was like. What was he? Was he like a data analyst? Was he a seismologist? Was he a, a doctor? Like we have no idea who he was. I mean, as far as I know, maybe they told me in the movie, I just forget. But it might be cool to kind of pepper in those scenes of like his previous home life. That'd be kind of cool. So jump to um, the, the, the mom scene. These little egg things are hatching all around her and she and her kids are like shooting them and running and like they like are running and running and maybe they meet up with like another tribe. And this tribe, this like group of people like, oh, hey, come on, you need help, let's go, let's go. And they head to the hills, which are like the rocks and they have, you know, uh, caves and they have fires and they have a little bit of food and they're very welcoming. And she's like, what the hell were those things? And they're like, yeah, we've seen them before too. And from what we can gather, they come after you based on vibration. It's very similar to the movie Tremors. I don't know if you remember Tremors, but they did exactly the same thing. They can feel vibration and they head to the rocks. Um, little maybe too much like tremors, but oh well, just just go with me on this. So she's like, okay, that's cool. Um, so she's kind of wary of these people. She you know sleeps with her guns. She doesn't know these people, and um, she's maybe met some bad people along the way. So she has reason to to doubt these guys. Uh, so they light a fire, they feed her, they the, the people are playing with the kids, singing them songs, and uh, everything seems to be okay. Um, and as long as they're on this this rock, this cave. Um, you know, they're, they're fine. These things were not going to come get them, but this is not really a long-term solution. This isn't really a way to live life. You can't just be cave people, right? So she's kind of sensing some romantic interest from one of the, one of the guys that are there and she's kind of resistant to it, but also like, you know what? My husband's dead. Maybe this is the life for me. Maybe this I can just partner up with this guy. He can help me and these people can be my new community. So she's open to it. She's thinking about it. She hasn't done anything yet. So John Krasinski, we flash back to him. He's hobbling along and he finds a house. And wouldn't you know, there's a garage and there's a, a bike, a motorcycle in there. So he makes uh, use of the house, maybe some first aid stuff. We see him like kind of washing up, having a meal. Um, changing his bandages, that kind of stuff. And then he gets on this bike and he's, you know, racing wherever he's going. Um, and again, these, these things are sensing the vibration for the motorbike and they're coming out of the ground and they're crawling and they're fast and they're all like, you know, trying to get them. So he's like racing as fast as he can. And eventually he hits the highway. He skids out. He's not like expert on the motorcycle or whatever. And uh, these things kind of stop at the highway and they're kind of looking aimlessly. So he's kind of cluing in like, okay, so if I'm on the cement, these things can't really sense my presence, not the presence, but they can't sense the vibration. So he's like, oh, okay. So he takes off down the highway and nothing's after him because it's kind of smooth sailing. And uh, at night, he kind of maybe sees in the distance a flickering, a flame, maybe some smoke. He goes, you know what? That looks like a fire. That looks like civilization. Let me head in that direction. So that's what he does. Heads in that direction and he sees civilization, parks the bike, hikes up there and he sees this dude kind of making an advance on his woman. So he's like, calls out, hey, like what the hell? The mom turns around, the kids turn around. They're all like, they cannot believe it. Oh my God, John, what are you doing? They like run up, hug him. I thought you were dead. Like, yeah. Um, a craziest thing, I, I fell into a pit, broke my leg, it's, I'm pretty banged up, but uh, seems to be healing nicely. So glad to have been, you know, reunited with you and everyone's safe. Who's this dude? Oh yeah, don't worry about him. But he is worrying about him. He doesn't know these people and this guy is kind of looking at her, he's a little thirsty, right? So this guy, the, the new guy is still trying to kind of make an advance on the woman and maybe John doesn't like that, they get into a fist fight they get split up. It's like, Hey, this isn't a place for us. Um, we're going to go. It's like, where are we going to go? It's like, I don't know, but we can't stay here. So 
John, his his woman, they pack up the kids, the backpacks, and they they take off. So this kind of sets up the the final act of the movie, which admittedly I don't really have fully worked out, but um, we we need to see these kind of heroes tri uh, be triumphant and kind of defeat these new kind of creatures, whatever they are. And uh, and and they're everywhere. They're, they're coming after them. So maybe he, from his previous life, he's like a seismologist or he's some sort of mechanic or whatever, creates a vibration, lures them out. He's killing them, maybe lights them on fire or does something. Haven't really worked that part out. But, um, but in the end, I think I see them like on a boat because these things are just coming everywhere. And he's like, you know what, the ground is not safe. These eggs are kind of hatching everywhere. Let's get on this like yacht and let's just sail. We'll load it up with food and it's kind of this harrowing race, this climax where they're like, hey, we've got to get in the boat, let's go. And they're kind of crawling after them and they take off and it seemingly everything's good, right? But then there's this like rumble in the sky and the clouds part and it's like this giant like alien spacecraft that like flies over them and they just watch it and it goes into the distance and I don't know there's there probably needs to be a little bit more development there but I think that could be I don't necessarily want to turn this into like an aliens versus humans movie but I the reason I go there is because logically you could really have one of three things to explain these these beasts because we didn't really see a lot of explanation in the first movie um, they could either be what I think logically is possible is you have some intelligent um, human civilization. They're like the new tenants of Earth and they're kind of evicting all the old tenants. So they send these beings down first, kind of like, you know, Fifth Wave kind of did a similar concept where you put down aliens that kills everything. And this new species come and they move in, essentially. They colonize Earth. That would explain why these blood-sucking monsters... I mean, those beings don't look like the type of being that you would suspect to, you know, make advanced technology that can fly them across intergalactic, uh, you know, space travel. It's likely another being that's using these as a weapon. So, and maybe the eggs, they plant all these eggs and they're hatching and, and that kind of thing. So maybe, maybe now the aliens are coming to Earth to kind of set up set up shop so I would kind of go that storyline even though I wouldn't necessarily go there I would just kind of imply it um, the other kind of explanation is you could say well they're just creatures of earth that have always been there and now, now suddenly they're just hatching for whatever reason maybe there's some seismic activity or some kind of like um, Pacific Rim did that some like shift in the earth's crust and these things now uh, you know, we're in hibernation or whatever. And then the third explanation is maybe they're brought back from like, do you remember the movie Life with uh, like Ryan Reynolds was in it briefly um, and they brought back this like alien specimen, this like sim symbiote, I wanna use a Spider-Man term, but like maybe it came from a space trip from humans and it hits a ride and then it kind of run amok. So those are kind of the three things. I'd probably wanna to lean toward the aliens, but and if you really want to get crazy, you could do a third movie, even though I don't think this franchise is really going to lend itself to a third movie. But you could do a third movie where it's like humans, the, the survivors of humans and aliens, even though we've seen that movie a bunch and I don't really want to do that in this movie. But so yeah, there it is. Those are some preliminary ideas I have on A Quieter Place, a sequel to A Quiet Place. Let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas of how we can make this better. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, if you like the video, please uh, hit the like button. If you want to hear more videos where I talk about movie pitches or writing, please hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time.